Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, <laughs> nearly say the new order no, and the Kaiser Redux mod as ERA, soon to be ERA, currently the Republic of Ireland I believe. Yes, currently the Republic of Ireland, but soon to be ERA with our glorious new flag. By the way, this is our first proper episode, so off we go. Irish Economic Advancement Act, Political Power Plus 50. Pass the Irish Economic Advancement Act and begin considering the economic direction of the nation despite gaining our freedom. The economy of our fine island has laid stagnant for quite some time and is even in some places decaying. With the passing of the Irish Economic Advancement Act, IEAA, the doll can address this vital issue. Ireland may be small, but her people are industrious, and her cities have plenty of room to grow. Indeed they do. The State of the Republic in 1936, after countless years of arduous rebellion and weathering oppressive British rule, the Irish people have won their freedom and their country back. But as one enemy was vanquished, another rose in her place. Perhaps yet more dangerous still, Michael Collins sits as president, eager to defend the independence of his nation as any class. Yet his political enemies are many as the 1937 election approaches. Violence between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil is rife, while Sinn Féin, while, uh, while, while, Sinn Féin, while, Sinn Féin, while is not popular as the other two, presents itself as a moderate alternative. Ireland is a powder cake and it's only a matter of time. Until it explodes. These are turbulent times. Political power, uh, nah. Political power, not political plower. Plus 25. Fantastic. We'll have to take this off. Fucking. First I was too cold. Now I'm too fucking hot. Or rather, my, my entire body is fucking fine. But the left arm? No, sir. The left arm is too fucking warm. Now. That's fine. We have a lot of manpower to recruit. So that's good. We're we'll getting our Mauser 98B. Don't even know what the B represents. K, of course, is Kurtz, for short, because it's shorter than the World War One Mauser. Also, I uh, I redid the uh, the custom uh, country paths. Um, I added in just a bit more, basically more stuff, like Krivia, uh, Kurt von Schleicher in Germany, just that kind of stuff, and the Sorelians in France, just to kind of spice things up a bit. Things are going to be quite extreme in this run. Problems up north. Edward Carson, the former leader of the Unionist Party, died last year, aged 81. He was an extremely divisive figure whilst alive and fled to England when Ireland gained her independence and took back Ulster. Total charter. He was particularly reviled outside of Ulster for his persecution of beloved Irish poet and author Oscar Wilde. His memory was venerated today by loyalists in the north of Ireland who held a memorial service in Belfast with several leading members of the UUP speaking in his name. The memorial attracted quite a crowd, showing that Carson still has power even in death. His spectre is looming over Ulster just as the tensions and threat of rebellion loom over it as well. He's a problem even from the grave, indeed. Physical power minus 25. Okay, we got 25, we lost 25. Very well. Now that's offline. Blah, we have some... Our focus icons are just gorgeous. Look at, that's a bloody T-55. This is a T-62. It might be a T-62. Either way. Ah, Christian corporatism with the solidarists, Christian corporatism with the legionarists. Very nice. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You can't access this anymore until the 1937 elections have been held. That's curious. You used to be able to get it right off the bat. In fact, it was a bit of a strategy to run straight down here and get the Atlantic Trade Commission to get reduced consumer goods with America. Or well, because of America, rather. We can access this, that's good. You can go for uniting the nation. Um, right off the bat, but you have to wait until the 1937 election for the status of Ulster. You never escape poverty. Indeed. Oh, what am I saying? This is a this is mutually exclusive law. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, it's just in case it, it wasn't clear, we will most absolutely be going with negotiate with the unionists. Because uh, Garold, I, I won't say these flip floppity, but like here it says crack down against the Anglo's, but he's also very much like like. He's a Christian. Like, like he's a Christian specifically. He's a Christian first and a Catholic second. Like even in our own timeline, he wanted um, Ireland to be based on Christianity, not Catholicism. He had no problem with Protestants in the north. Uh, what else? Do we have? Or or anywhere else? And what else do we have? Creation one is good. The taxes is good. Be probably the best off going for the research speed, rushing the research slot. Yeah. Oh, the industrialization is also good though. In our 49 bloody days, but 40, yeah. Some of them are 49, some of them are 42. Either way, I think we should get. Let's probably go with this first, to be honest. Industry for Ireland. Begin industrializing in Ireland. Our civilian industry has an enormous potential for growth. Oh, I ran out of this first. The doll considers the economy with the passing of the art. Oh, 
with the passing of the Irish Economic Advancement Act, IEAA, a commitment by the Irish government to a rapid and complete overhaul of the economy has been made. As stipulated in the Act, the government must now decide an annual, on an annual focus to improve the economy. Michael Collins, President of the Republican Leader of Fine Gael, as well as Frank McDermott of the National Centre Party, believe that Ireland should focus on building up its industry as quickly as possible. Sorellians elected in France. The Comité de Salut Public. Um, a syndicalist coalition led by Jim Larkin argued that giving power to the workers' unions is the best way to increase our nation's productivity. Lastly, Sinn Féin suggests a focus on mainstream industrial research and development. Okay, that gives us that. Not too. Where do we go with this? Side with the Democrats and the Liberals. Ooh, but this doesn't give me 50 political power, though. Oh, okay. Mm. I'll go for this instead. Yeah, Collins and the NCP have the right idea. Plus 50 political power. Change the popularity of market liberal ah, liberalism to 1.5%. Add IEA annual focus industrialization, which grants military and civilian factory construction speed plus 5%. Now, industry for Ireland. Our civilian industry has an enormous potential for growth. There is a major unemployment problem in our nation, with many families too poor to regularly feed themselves. By revitalising our industry, we can both create new jobs and improve the economic strength of our nation. Indeed. And we can immediately go for partial mob as soon as we have 200 percent power. First of all, I think we should just go straight off for... Or we go straight for free trade. No reason not to. We have very few. Resources. I'm going to say very few. Very few. I did not mean to click that. No, what I meant to click was this. Like, we've, we have three aluminium and three steel. And five steel, sorry. Now, we will be increasing our resources over the course of the game. But we are very much going to need the resources of the new Celtic areas. Or the new uh, the areas that we'll be taking like you know scotland primarily but also very much wales there's nothing in Brittany, unfortunately we'll get a war goal to go after iceland um i don't know about you guys but i've never really considered iceland to be you know gaelic celtic anything of that nature i've always considered it to be a nordic country uh use kind of mostly because it is a nordic country i have no idea where we get a fucking war goal to go after iceland that's very weird but we won't be going after them because I don't want Iceland because they're not a you know they're not a Gaelic country. Don't suppose Isle of Man is a separate VP, is it? No, of course not. Then how the fuck am I supposed to get? How am I supposed to get the Isle of Man? We even in one of the flags the Isle of Man is there, but that means we have to take Northern England as well. That's kind of awkward. Uh, I hate that. Black Monday hits Ireland. On the 3rd of February, the German stock market collapsed, plunging the world into depression. Ireland has relied on trade with Germany in its sphere of influence ever since the British Revolution, when we, declared we, when we declared ourselves a republic and cut ties with the British Empire. This crisis had, has had a severe effect on the Irish economy, as Germany and our other European trading partners have been hit by the crisis. Many scrambled to find solutions, mostly uh, most parties proposing either e Irish economic development or maintaining stability while the German economy recovers. More radically, the Anglophile National Centre Party advocate uh, abandoning trade with continental Europe and opening ties with the Entente, often making speeches tinged with anti-German rhetoric. The syndicalists have also begun to advocate revolution, claiming that this crisis is proof of the failures of moneyism. This could be bad. It is bad. That's great. Political power minus 150, add Black Monday, which grants consumer consumer goods factories 25%, construction speed minus 20%, production efficiency cap, and factory output minus 20% each. I have deleted all saves from the Vyatka game, I have cleared the cache, and I have verified the integrity of, of the game file, so hopefully the mod will be uh, running as quickly as possible. But it is a slow mod, undoubtedly. I didn't choose anything to happen, anything specific to happen here in the Caucasus because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to favour either Russia or Germany um, because I'm not, I'm not trying to make it too easy, you know. I don't intend on fighting the Germans, um, but because we'll be aligning with the Italians, we may have to. It's, it's kind of awkward because we don't have a lot of people, and we don't have a lot of industry. Meaning we can't go for a massive army, but we also can't go for a technologically advanced army. Like, you know, tanks only and, you know, well, let's say tanks, you know, armored divisions only and, you know, backed by large air force and that kind of a thing. No, we're very much going to have to play our limited cards wisely. Borders. I think we'll start by... Korkosa, that's right. I 
if I did this. Listen up! Deleted the army. Did that work? Oh, you gotta be shitting me, why not? I got rid of the thing. That's, that's stupid. Either way, it'll, it'll make things look better, though. Train them all up. We are getting some army experience from not because of normal difficulty. Okay, whatever. Whatever gives it to me, I suppose. The IFI initiative, the government have, have ordered that extensive funds be made available for the rapid industrialization of our nation. Too many Irish men and women are without jobs. Many British-owned factories were closed down when Ireland gained her, her independence and have since fallen into disrepair. Ireland's industry lacks any real focus or direction despite the population being eager and ready to work. It is up to the government to decide just how much of an investment into the civilian industry we wish to make. A major amount, Ireland can rise to greatness. Physical power, minus 25. We will have the option to build several industrial projects in Ireland over time. Now, Revitalize the North also gets one building start as well as one civilian factory. We get uh, we get events for the Harland and Wolf Shipyard, beautiful, as well as the Short Brothers Company. After the 1925 ceasefire, the northernmost region of Ulster has been an, an industrial slump relative to the rest of the nation. Okay, I wouldn't have said that. Uh, would have said it would have been the industrial heart of the nation, but whatever. Belfast, well, I was going to say, yeah, once used to be a thriving industrial city, now the towns and cities such as Derry and Coleraine were looking likely to follow. Revisiting this issue and energising the north with, with industrial investments will help to lift the region. It'll also make us look good, which is what it's all about. How much manpower are you short? We'll probably fill that up. Maybe not. Yeah, do that. 100,000 men in training. Yeah. Also, of course, as we fill out the division, we'll also have to probably call up... Uh, Pull back on the number of divisions we're producing. Because what I intend on doing is something like this. Yeah, like that's an extra. Five, okay, that's not too bad. An extra five regiment per division. Then I also most definitely intend on adding in these two. It's an extra eleven hundred men per division. Then I gotta fill the rest of that up. Our manpower is limited, but we're not doing too bad. I'm hoping that, um, well I'm not hoping, I'm going to try and make sure that the men that we send in are going to be well trained, are going to be well equipped in terms of small arms and artillery, hopefully with some support equipment, that would be fantastic, Metaxas has overthrown the Greek government, although Mosley is here, also I'll put Mosley in Britain as uh, Maximists, and they succeed as well. 20th anniversary of the 1916 Easter Rising. On Monday, the 24th of April 1916, members of the Irish Volunteers, Irish Citizen Army, and Common Naman seized key locations in Dublin and declared a free Irish public. You know, I'd probably be best off uh, doing this. Surrounded by the vastly superior numbers and artillery of the British Army, they fought on for six days before eventually surrendering. Most of the leaders of the Rising were executed, although a loss at the time, it would subsequently lead to Ireland's War of Independence and Freedom after 700 years of British rule. Today is the 20th anniversary, and celebrations and parades have taken place all across Ireland. Including a thundering speech from President Collins emphasizing the need to protect the freedom that Patrick Pierce, Padraig Mac Pierce, and his comrades died for. For slavery fled, oh glory said when you fell in the foggy dew. Physical power plus 50. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn up the song as well. Yeah, but we need to actually just get some riflemen out before we start focusing on any artillery. We need to start with the basics. Our industry is small, but it will grow. Of course, we're going to Black Monday as well. Yeah, the effects of the Black Monday crisis have hit Ireland with severe results due to the Irish reliance on trade with Germany after the British Revolution, having cut ties with the Entente while Britain fell to syndicalism. Indeed. What is this? Oh, this is new. 
Those who still fight as every year on the 24th of April. The Irish people gathered together as one to celebrate more than the rising in 1916, despite having been anomaly and having been a nominal failure. It was the rising that gave birth to Free Ireland and all but Ulster viewed the day with great reverence. This year being the 20th anniversary of the rising was home to much more grand fest uh, festiveness than usual. This being the case, very few took note of the posting all around Ireland of a proclamation of a group claiming to be the Executive Council of the Second Doll. Chaired by Sean O'Kelly, himself an elected member of Ireland's Second Doll, the group transferred their legitimate authority to what they call the Army Council of the Irish Republican Army, as was their right as per a resolution based on uh, based by the First Doll. Of course, when the day was done, people did finally start to take note of such a strange proclamation. Nothing was expected to come of such an odd occurrence. However, with just a few weeks past its posting, the Army Council has issued an ultimate to our government, which they consider to still be the Free State, acting less as an ultimatum and more like a manifesto, the document sent in an unmarked letter details in brief the legitimacy of the Army Council, explains their aims, and finally concludes with demands. The Army Council explains their legitimacy by stating that they represent the final remnants of the Irish Republic proclaimed in 1916. They claim that they can trace their leg legacy to the IRA splitting upon the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty. Uh, where was that? With, the, with those against the treaty uh, carrying on to fight, even when Collins declared an end to the free state uh, upon the British Revolution. As for the so-called Executive Council, they are made up of members of the Second Doll, and with the Second Doll uh, never formally dissolving itself, they claim to carry on its mission. The Army Council's goal are simple, the complete abolishing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty and everything associated with it, and the re-establishment of the True Republic of 16. Despite these quite grandiose claims, the IRA, even with the support of the Executive Council, are quite fringe, even although this position did once share some popularity, mostly among Sinn Féin. With the 32-county Ireland finally free, however, almost all popular support dried up. Even Sinn Féin dropped their support in its most recent art fest, although this did cause a split within the party, wherein Sean O'Callaghan, party president, along with a few others left in defiance, due to its almost non-existent popular support, a majority of those within the government believe that such an ultimatum will lead nowhere and suggest that our current measures are more than enough. However, a few believe that we should wrap up anti-terrorism measures before more civilians get hurt or worse. A very small minority actually believe we should sit down and work out some kind of deal. After all, if we can become the true republic, there will be nothing left to fight for. Either way, Collins is expected to make a decision soon, lest the already tense situation get even worse. That's very interesting. Let's pop a save and find out, shall we? Perhaps sir, there is something else to be gained from peace. Arrange a meeting with this army council. Political power plus 15 gain base ability plus 2%. Hmm. Very curious indeed. Now. National Industrial Investment Fund add National Industrial Investment Fund which grants civilian factory constructions to be plus two and a half percent. Constructing and expanding our nation's industry is vital if Ireland is going to play any sort of key role on the world stage in the future. We need to make funds available uh, to finance our rapid industrialization projects that will allow us more room for expansion, more efficient construction, depending on how much funds we make available. Now Sayer Stott alcohol factories. We're not doing any favours by literally just saying that we're not the free state and now having Sayer Stott, which, which means free state. Following the commencement of the IFI initiative, the Irish Department of Industry and Commerce have decided on perhaps a rather obvious choice to kickstart Ireland's industry, alcohol. Ireland has a long and proud tradition of producing Irish whiskey, mm -hmm. but much of the production is done in small family-run distilleries throughout the countrysides. The proposed Sarah Start development will open up several alcohol factories and produce some much-needed employment for our nation, but the location for the development has yet to be dedicated, only that it should be in one of our less industrially developed regions. Also, God, if anyone needs a drink, it's them. Man, there's something to be said for that. I'd rather put it in Connacht, to be honest, though, because Connacht is the least important place. So if anyone, if any, any place is going to be, you know, filled with alcoholics, I'd rather it be Connacht. The public controls the Pope. He's the one who just who restores the elections, yes? Or restores the amount of that kind of stuff. Should not have clicked that, because now we're going to have to wait. Alright, here we are. Right, here we are. 
Yeah, yeah, he restores the elections. Deal for the Republic, after a long and series and ten series of meetings between the Army Council of the IRA and the government of President Collins, the two sides have released a joint statement officially announcing that they have come to an agreement. The agreement officially called the Belfast Agreement due to the meetings taking place in Ultra's capital, in essence, answers every question that the Army Council had against the Republican government. First and foremost, the Republic of Ireland declared by President Collins using the machinery of the Free State and considered by the IRA to in nature still be the Free State, shall be completely dissolved in its place. The Irish Republic declared in 1916 and continued on by the IRA shall be given control of Ireland. Secondly, the Anglo Irish Treaty itself be already discarded. Itself already discarded in all but named by the Republic shall be declared null and void. Thirdly, a civilian uh, caretaker government made up of columns of cabinet and a form of the doll shall be appointed by the Army Council. Fourthly, the Senate Aaron shall be temporarily dissolved. However, the body shall reform following the up and coming 1937 elections. Fifthly, every law passed by the various dolls of the Free State shall be adopted by the Irish Republic. Although following the 1937 elections, the doll shall be the third to, consult, to coincide with the second finally closing. Finally, both the IRA and our own defence forces shall be merged, and the leadership of both shall combine. While in effect, very little will truly change, in the minds of these legitimists, Ireland shall be under its rightful government. Even despite this, the agreement has yet to be ratified by the doll, as many few uh, view it, yeah, that's supposed to be viewed as needless and worthless change to win over a small amount of the population. As the debate within the Irish Parliament comes to a close, it appears that the agreement has been ratified. Oh, cool. The agreement has been ratified as it may be the only way for a lasting peace. Maurice Toomey becomes a general. Maurice Toomey is already a general, am I wrong? I could have sworn I saw his face. Yes, sir! Where did I see Maurice Toomey's name? Oh, I know I saw it somewhere. It's not here, is it? I definitely saw the name Maurice Toomey somewhere. Does he disappear after the start of the game? By the way, fantastic. The Republic of Ireland will be known as Publix and Heron. Maurice Toomey becomes a general. Fantastic, now we have a name in Irish. Beautiful. That was an interesting series of events. Oh, look at that! Oh, that was worth it. Splendid. How many men is that? 36,000. Beautiful. Bye bye. Oh, that was most definitely worth it. Most definitely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, n never mind. I could have sworn I did see the name Maurice to me, but that wasn't his portrait. Or was it his portrait? I could have sworn I saw it in the first. Yeah, I remember you being in command. Oh man, that's weird. That's weird. Ready, sir! No. Move out! Move out! Ready to move! Move out! End of the Republic of Ireland. Today, from a, uh, top Oris and Utron, President Michael Collins declared that the Republic of Ireland has been uh, formally dissolved. Far from being a coup or a revolution, the Republic dissolving comes as a result of the Belfast Agreement, a treaty between Collins as government and a remnant of the Irish Republican Army. And in the agreement, the Republic of Ireland was to be formally dissolved, replaced by the original Irish Republic, declared in 1916 during the Easter Rising, which the IRA claimed to be the legitimate heirs of. The newly re established Irish Republic has been given a caretaker government made up of by Collins' own cabinet. Exactly what is going to change in Ireland as a result of the Belfast script remains to be seen. Uh, Aaron Gabra, I don't think there's a you in that. Very interesting though. I wonder, does this unlock a secret path? Maybe? That'd be cool. I'd be, I'd be down for that. Did we just lose political power? Kind of look like we did. Listen up! By the way, Cahal Bruva. That's a doctrine, of course. We will be going on the attack. Organization first. Good at hands I am. Yeah, that was most definitely worth it. They, they had 32,000 troops fringe element my ass. They were larger than the bloody National Army. 
Industrial Investment Fund, the government's decision to orchestrate the creation of a national fund for investing in Irish injury has been well received by the Republic. Recent economic developments in the nation have been seen as an encouraging sign that the dollar is committed to completing Ireland's, uh, Ireland's economic rebirth. Uh, the creation of the NIIF will allow for the development of specialised construction companies uh, and facilitate the purchase of building materials to keep the wheels of industrialisation turning. Massively invest in the fund and get those factories built. Crystal Power minus 40. Replace National Industrial Investment Fund with Massive, with massive, massive National Industrial Investment Fund. Effective change. Civilian factory construction speed plus 7.5%. The pints are calling. Fuck. The construction of the Sarastot alcohol factories has finished. And the nation can enjoy the benefits. No, ignore that. Just pretend it says uh, foreign nations. The factories have not come without their expenses. But there's no doubt they will be good for public morale. Mm. As well as the economy in the long term. Just launch yeah. Political power minus 40. Connick gets three building slots and three civilian factories. That is like... Yeah, that was a lot. No. Oh. December 37, right? Yeah, so effectively 1938. So we have a bit to go. Yes, we'll go. We'll rush this. I didn't even realise that I had been rushing this. We need to rush this. Create an, in an international business centre in Dublin. The rise of syndicalism in Britain has created a void. Oh, lovely. A void in the British Isles that Ireland could potentially fill. Non-syndicalist nations could look to Ireland as a lead trade nation. Situated in the Atlantic between the American and European continents. With some effort and plenty of foreign lobbying, Dublin could be the next London. The reunification of Sinn Féin. With the ratification of the Belfast Agreement, they re-established the Irish Republic across all 32 cunt uh, counties. Counties. The fractured uh, Sinn Féin party has formally reunited itself as part of the reunion. Uh, the break-off led by Sean uh, Ukalik has been has formally dropped its process of, absen of abstentionism. While the process was mainly painless, the exact details of the reunification are a bit puzzling. Both parts of the party in their statements of reunion welcomed the other half back into the fold. The reason for the strange wording is due to the fact that both claim to be the true inheritor of Sinn Féin's legacy. Regardless of the strange wording, with the two halves reunited, Sinn Féin is bigger and more a threat than ever. Oh god, the legacy of Griffith lives on same as this. Oh damn, that's a big change. Social, social, uh, social democracy just got 10% support. Yeah, that was huge. They're now the largest party. The Harland and Wolf Shipyard. During the early 1900s, the Harland and Wolf Shipyard in Belfast had the prestigious honour of being the world's largest shipyard after the capitulation of the British Empire during the First Welt Creek and their second capitulation not long after the trade unionists. It has fallen into disrepair and has been overtaken by other yards throughout the world. With refurbishment, it, it could once again be a great asset, but this time for Ireland, not the British imperialists. We will make... The shipyard, the envy of the world once more at Harland Wolf Shipyard, which grants carrier, uh, capital ship, screen ship, submarine, and convoy production. Cost of minus 5%, political power minus 50. Ulster gets three building slots and three dockyards. Fantastic. Black Monday ends. That was fast. July of 36. After a long time owing to the economic and diplomatic actions of our government, the Irish economy has finally recovered from Black Monday at last. Political power plus 50. Remove Black Monday, which grants consumer goods factories 5%. Only oh, it's been reducing all this time, has it? It has. Fantastic. For me, here's independence. That's just weird. That's just weird. How many men will we have? 142,000. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Hmm. Oh, that, that was a nice event chain. I like that. What's that? Oh, 
click to switch between pre of aura and t-shirt view. Oh. You're the pre of aura, eh? I see. I dislike that. I dislike you, O'Duffy. No true nationalist ever calls for an invasion of their country by a foreign nation. massive amount of investment made by the Irish government into the development of our national industry ensures that we are able to build civilian factories at a much faster speed than we otherwise could. 10% is a nice buff. Harlington Wolf Shipyard. At the turn of the century, the Harlington Wolf Shipyard in Belfast was the largest in the world. Newly restored and expanded by the Irish government, it can once again make a claim for this prestigious title. Yes. I'm going to use that for our submarines. Oh, we actually have some naval experience. That's fantastic. These. Up a bit. No, this is as good as it gets, I'm afraid. We do actually have a navy, don't we? Maurice, I think, is the guy running it. Yeah, Seamus Unweirish. As well as Jonathan King. Nice. And I'm the jack of the pin, yeah. an Indo China declares independence. Now, let's see what results would we get. I didn't even realise I was rushing that until I looked down and saw that it was there. I think we need to go for this next. Invigorate the armed forces, that is pretty good. Military factories there, that is very much necessary. Another way away, yeah. Nah, so we don't really have too much to worry about. That's good. Now, the air and scientific innovation. Oh, we have to do this first. Promote double. Our rapid industrialization. Gotta have to keep adjusting the level of the bloody. Promote Dublin, our rapid industrialization and economic reforms have created an attractive environment for foreign business. If we play our cards right and offers of central subsidies, we can attract foreign powers to establish businesses in Dublin, turning it into a new centre of trade situated in the advantageous Atlantic. With London having fallen to the syndicalists, now is our chance to pick up the slack and make it work for us. We need to decide how much funds we'd like to commit to our project. The larger an investment, the wider our international reach will be. But as always, the spectre of the debt lurks over us. Spread the message loud and wide. Sp uh, yeah, spread the message loud and spread it wide. Dublin is open for foreign business. We go to the Germans, the Spanish, the Italians, the Dutch, the Americans, the Canadians, the British, the uh, exiled. F no, 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 not the exiled French. The regular French, mainland French, the Swedes, and the Austrians. French national worker state. That's a great name. Antonin Hampel. What ideology are you? Condemn. Pat off. Oh no, that, that's wrong. Wrong thing. Sock them. Okay. Now, Air and Scientific in Innovation Council adds Air and Scientific Innovation Council which grants research to be plus 2%. Our nation is greatly lacking in scientific progress compared to many other industrialized nations. Presently, Ireland has very little in the way of funding for scientific research. Beginning to develop a proper scientific program will be essential if we are to significantly develop our nation. Indeed it will, that's a fact. Who do we have here? Johnny Costello, Douglas Hyde, I knew that. Richard Mulcahy and Ono Duff. Ono Duffy is the Taoiseach. How long will this deficit take to fill? Quite a while, I assume. Yeah, wow, 985 days, okay. <laughs> we'll be uh, stepping that up a bit, hopefully. Oh, how are things going? Yes, the Polish is winning coming up this year. I'm having them go. Yeah, he's already here. Oh, I looked up how to say that name, but I'm after forgetting. Bielecki is fairly easy, but I assume it's Bielecki. Bielecki. Oh, Vlasov is here. Him popping up is kind of weird. I don't know. 
Vlasov and, and the ROA being here and the K KONR is just weird, man. In this timeline still, it's just kind of odd. Let the yaks fly. That might be a decent path, actually, for me to play. Flass off. Slay the dragon. Oh, no. The Germans say no. Let's hope that goes well or better elsewhere. It's kind of counting on the Germans, to be honest. Well, not, not counting on them, but just, you know. I didn't even have it in my head that they'd say no. Ally the Solidaris, eh? Gonna say yes, good. Political power plus 25 Lancer gets one building stop and one military factory. Good, we very much need that. <laughs> stop Kamal shot. Just a little research priorities, two one hundred percent Oh no, I have to do this first. A small step for Ireland, the Air and Scientific Innovation Council, ESIC, is a newly created sub-department of the government with one simple purpose in mind, a devotion to academia and scientific progress. Ireland has long been seen as a rural backwater by other world powers. A, a place that progress uh, seemed to leave behind, whilst a cruel opinion is not without truth. Centuries of British rule left Ireland largely neglected while the rest of the world raced on. It's time to catch up. The ESIC will be composed of expert scientists recruited from both the Irish population and from for uh, friendly foreign allies. ESIC research aims will increase our overall re research efficiency and may even occasionally produce major breakthroughs. Well, in certain fields, the government must now decide how important the ESIC is to the nation and how much funds should they receive. Alright, the Italians say no. Fuck. Ireland must leave from the past so that she can walk in the future. Massively fund the project. Plus the power minus 50. Would have been great if everyone had said yes. I think we have to get 50% or more um, responders. To, oh, I've been importing that. Not unnecessary. Damn it. We have to get 50% or more of the nations that we asked to accept for us to get the uh, Dublin Reborn kind of event back in this national spirit, I believe. Right, who, are we, who are we asking? We asked the Spanish, they said yes. We asked the Germans, they said no. We asked the Italians, they said no. We'll be asking the French. The Dutch, okay, the Dutch have given us 25 political power on one airbase. So we're two for four at the moment. We still have yet to ask the French. I, I, know, I don't know why I hover over the British when I said the French. We still have yet to ask the French, the British, the Portuguese, and the Austrians, as well as the Swedes, I believe. Full enough, when we ask the British and the French, like, obviously they have a choice to say yes or no, but even if they say yes, we also have a choice to, um, to say yes or no, um, if basically if we don't want any uh, syndicalist uh, presence. Oh, the American supply, oh, fantastic. 25 plus power, one building slot, and one civilian factory. Beautiful. Thank you, I actually forgot about the Americans. Ah, we're asking the Canadians as well, that's right. Okay, we are three for five. Oh ho! Fevzy Jack Mac. The Sharp Brothers Company, founded in England in 1908, the Sharp Brothers PLC is a private aerospace company with some existing operations and also having seen their business suffer as if it's significant losses thanks to the fate of the British Empire, they are now looking for new opportunities in the NC expansion and also as their highest priority. We can subsidise their venture at some cost to our nation, but the benefits of having a prominent aerospace industry are obvious in peace and conflict time. 
Belt Festival will come their worldwide headquarters, throw money at them, political power minus 50. And Short Brothers Aerospace PLC, which grants fighter production cost, close air support, carrier fighter, jet fighter, carrier cast, naval bomber, CV naval, uh, CV naval bomber, rocket interceptor, tactical bomber, jet tactical bomber, heavy fighter, strategic bomber, and transport plane production cost minus 5% each. Also gets four levels of airbase and two building slots and two military factories. Beautiful. Alright, the Canadians said no. We are now three for six. Radio. Number 36. We go for this first case for two. We are now short of sources. Go to the Russians. I read this? Don't think so. Our nation, our nation has a vital need for industry, and that need is coupled with an equal requirement uh, for research and development. Many of our factories are decrepit and out of date to build a modern industry. Ireland needs modern factories. Investing into industrial research will allow us to move further towards progress. 200% research bonuses for industry and electronics. Now, Irish Synthetics Project, 100% research bonus for synthetic uh, resources. Linster gets one synthetic refinery and one building slot. Although our people are industrious and our island ripe for industrialization, there is no accounting for the unfortunate lack of resources available to us relative to the major powers of the world. Oil and rubber are particularly problematic, so if we would like to make use of these resources in our in industries, Ireland must develop a functional synthetics program. Fuck, the British said no. We're now three for seven. Balls, I hope we don't fail. We still have yet to ask the French and the Swedes, so we can still pull this around and be... Five for nine. Oh, and the Austrians. Okay. We could be six for ten. I wish there was a way that we could make them say it. Liberal victory in Brazil. Oh, fuck. The French said no as well. Now we're, what, three for seven? No, we're three for eight. Oh, fuck. Shaw Brothers Aerospace PLC, founded in 1908. And the Shaw Brothers Private Limited Company was the world's first private aircraft manufacturer. What do you mean private limited company? It said it was a PLC. That's a public limited company. Private limited company is LTD. They expanded their operations into Ulster soon after, and Belfast became their headquarters. The Irish government's economic expense of Ulster has heavily benefited the company. Yeah, if 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 um, both. Oh, do, do we have to ask the port? I think we've yet to ask the Portuguese as well. Okay, we have to ask the Portuguese, the the Austrians, and the Swedes. I think that. Oh thank God, the Swedes said yes. Twenty-five political power, one building slot, and one civilian factory. All right, so who've we asked? We've asked asked the Spanish. We have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who said yes? American said, American said yes. Spanish said yes. Dutch said yes. Swede said yes. That's everyone so far. All right. Yet to ask the Austrians. And, and the Portuguese, I think. Let me see if I go back here and check that again. Maybe. No, it doesn't tell me. All right. Either way, here's hoping. Here is hoping. Oh, we built our infrastructure in Leinster. Fantastic. Scania Vedas. Oh, thank God the Austrian said yes. Political power plus 25. Leinster gets one building slot and one civilian factory. so far now. We got the Spanish, we got the Austrians, we got the Dutch, we got the Swedes, and we got the Americans. On top of that, we asked the Germans, the Italians, the French, and the British. They said no. And the Canadians. Okay, so we're five out of ten, I think. You have to ask the Portuguese, I believe. Yeah, 
You didn't seriously make the capital of Crimea Simferopol instead of Sevastopol, did you? You even have Sevastopol. What in the name of God? How do you not have Perakop? That's just weird. That's so weird. Dmitry Ulinov. Research slot in the bag. Soon to be in the bag. The ESIC have been doing a fantastic job today, but they still have room to grow. Further investment will facilitate their involvement in a greater number of research projects, enabling our teams to cover more ground and deal with more fields. This will improve our overall flexibility in the field of science. Beautiful. I want to fill that deficit. It's a bit better. Of course, we'll have Mosley here, so we, uh, we really do need it. God, he looks absolutely fucking zonked. Yeah, we need to be ready for Mosley. We do have another four divisions. Reasonably ready. Short on manpower. I guess we can do that. Yeah. That should help you along. Yeah, short of artillery. That's right. Yeah, now it's weird. Do it this way instead. Yeah. Oh, we managed to get it, thank God. Dublin Reborn, our attempts to cultivate foreign investments in Dublin have been a resounding success. As a result, we now enjoy a significant trade presence on the world's market. Ireland is no longer backwater to be mocked or derided. She is truly the Emerald Isle. Yay, Fortune. That means good fortune, I believe. Uh, physical power, plus 50. Uh, Dublin Reborn, which grants trade deal opinion factor, plus 35%. Same, we couldn't get the British, the French, the Italians, and the Germans. Kind of especially disappointed in the Germans. The British and French, I understand. Wish we, we'd have gotten the Italians as well, because we'll be aligning with them soon. You know? By the way, the Spanish came through for us, the Austrians came th uh, came through for us, as did the Dutch, the Swedes, and the Americans. I don't think we even asked Portugal. I must have gotten that wrong. Dublin Reborn Dublin has become one of the major financial centres of the world, allowing us to shift our, shift our economic weight and make more advantageous trade deals. Beautiful. The ESIC was created to help Ireland's scientific progress. A team of well-paid scientists, experts in different fields, shall work night and day to facilitate Ireland catching up with the rest of the world. Gorgeous. If we go for this, the Tente, I think we get more factories as well. And we've yet to do the, uh, the American tree, so we'll be fine. <sighs> yeah, yeah, the Vatsav run could be fun. Oh, people, people's Republic of Turkestan. I also want to do a Tur I want to do a Turkestan run. Try and fight the Russians. Yeah. The all considers the economy. I think we'll go with Collins again. Try and get out of this. Oh no, we're out of the political power. Off. That's good. Ooh, damn, they actually managed to get Astrakhan. They won the Battle of Astrakhan, and then they must have gone after them. I believe. I think I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Now, oh, research slot. Fantastic, we now have four, which is incredibly strong. Not at all overpowered. Guarantee Britain has four. And we ha and, well, Britain has four, and we have four. It just makes no sense, like... You know? Now, the Steel City, perhaps? We get another, re yeah, we get another research slot if we go here. Oh, I shouldn't have built, built it all up. It's a shame. And I think we need to run down here and get some uh, some goddamn military factories. 2052 days away. Reform of the armed forces, political power plus 50. Since the end of the Northern Campaign, the Irish military has fallen into stagnation and suffered from downsizing as the Union of Britain and Canada appeared less threatening. As international tensions are growing, the military must be revitalised. Indeed it must. Now, finally getting one per day. We'll snap those two uh, military factories straight into artillery. Guaranteed. Strangers 
So the last stop is going to go for the rest of the... Yeah, that could be a very fun run, actually. Very fun run. That's all fine. Now, like I was saying, just one focus away. That's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, land forts there. That's pretty good. That's handy. That's easy. That's easy political power, actually. Right there. There's... Yeah. Six weeks and for 75 political power. That's not bad. By the way, military industry. Political power plus 20. Leinster, uh, Leinster and Munster each get one building slot and one military factory. Whilst the people of Ireland would prefer peace to conflict. Wait, they also got uh, Kazakhstan, Alas Orda. Oh, that's very lucky. There is no doubt that war may very well be on the horizon with an enemy across the Irish Sea and more still waiting in the wings. Ireland must build her military industry if he hopes to survive the coming storm. Indeed. We can transition away from partial mobilisation. Which I think we will. Yeah. Maybe it'd be best to get some army experience. Yeah, we'd probably be better off getting some army experience, to be honest. Army Hill Command folks, artillery, army experience plus 0 0.06 daily, artillery attack, and uh, artillery attack plus 10%, artillery defense plus 5%. Very strong. Uh, army, Logis army High Command folks, logistics, army experience gain plus 0 0.09 daily, division attrition minus 8%. Army Command focus, offense, army experience gain plus 0 0.06, is plus 0 0.06 daily, division attack plus 5%. Beautiful. That should be netting us a decent amount each day. Yeah. Gonna have to rush down that land doctrine focus for to try and level out against the British as best we can. German rifles, British artillery. The, the Irish army in our own timeline was like that a lot. If you ever see a picture of the Irish army, you'll see British rifles, German helmets, you know, all assorted uniforms. Yes, indeed. Yes, the Mountainous Republic is going after Georgia to get this, uh, to get Sochi and Abkhazia. As they always do. You're probably best off going straight for the leftmost path to... Or then, actually, I suppose there's, uh, there's something to be said for, um, for finishing the rest of it to let the, uh, let the nations and the Caucasus build up. And then go for them to try and get it, uh, the most amount of industry as possible. Yeah, it's probably the better route to be honest. Especially because they have their own trees as well. I think they're doing it. Huh? Yeah, they do. Look at that. I hear that's ridiculously strong. It's ridiculously strong. More industrialized than Russia. Oh yeah, definitely. As Vlasov, just don't invade them. Wait until wait and wait for as long as possible to invade them. Get a ton of fucking industry. Have more industry than Russia. Very lucky to get Alice order though. Finish off all of this stuff. Kind of need it anyway, to be honest. Yeah, it's probably decently easy enough run, to be honest. Even easier if there's a bloody civil war going on, of course. Oh, you're right, can't yeah. I mean, you've seen it. Ooh la la. Two of Who's over here? Obviously, it's called Jack Rosen. If it ain't. Radio, fantastic. It is 37. The Indo Chinese revolt succeeds. Good to see. Good to see. Short on seal, but that only affects the convoys, so I do not care. Naval bases, yeah. Yeah, you, you, this this is kind of weird. You can define a production area to focus at on an increased cost in exchange for higher output. So all it really does 
it like it just it levels out. It's kind of useless. That's why I always go for this one. It's better in a way. And that's definitely better, but I am. This doesn't give you consumables. Might run down these sectors just to get some physical power. Now on tier four. Power plus 25, air experience plus 10, 150% cost reduction for air doctrine. One glaring error of the Irish military so far has been the lack of any air force. Seen as too unimportant and expensive with the British uh, building one of the largest air forces in the world, it is vital that we correct this if we are to stand a chance. Orders! Another 84,000 men in training, that's good. We're finally starting to get out some artillery as well. Even better. Who knows how soon the British will be coming for us. Oh, shouldn't have clicked that. Never click any other nation's focus. <laughs> oh yeah, they could do it very, very soon. Oh, damn, there's an American Civil War already? Bloody hell. Yeah. Advances in research efficiency, thanks to study funding by the Irish government, the ESIC has gradually been expanding over time and has grown and has grown in experience and efficiency, allowing them to tackle multiple research projects simultaneously. Ireland's scientific development is rapidly improving alongside the ESIC's own progress, and this investment is obviously paying off the news we've all been waiting for. Research speed plus. We will we go from uh, Aaron Scientific Innovation Council with experience to Aaron Scientific Innovation Council research speed plus two percent. Another 25 plus one power, fantastic. Formation flying. Now on Torm. On Tarn, political power plus 25, army experience plus 10, military tactics and doctrines have changed since the end of the Northern Campaign in 1926. The Irish army, on the other hand, has not. It is essential that we stay up to date with the outbreak, or when the outbreak of conflict in Europe is looking more and more likely by the day. Now, Deedon. Since the outbreak of hostilities, hostilities in the United States, many citizens of Irish descent have decided to return to their ancestral homeland to try and escape the chaos unfolding in America. It is our duty to help our Irish brethren. Pistol power plus 10. Add Irish American refugees, which grants a recruitment population factor 1%. Stability minus 2%. That gives us access to two more decisions, I believe. But only we can only. Yeah, that's it. But we can get both? That's way better. Because previously, right? Like, naturally, 2% recruitment population is way better than 5% construction speed. But, um, especially as a small nation like Ireland. But uh, if we can do both of them, that's fantastic. Sounds very good to me. Now, just in case this isn't correct, I will go for the recruitment of the fighting men first. Since arriving in Ireland, many refugees have had problems finding employment, which has created some tensions in our society. One solution would be to enlist those refugees in the army to serve their newfound homeland. Add refugee brigades, which grants the recruitment population factor 2%. Ah, see, I was right. We did lose it. I was hoping that they had changed it, but... It would appear not. I will go research some submarines, because otherwise, how are we going to get across that damn channel? You know, sea, rather. First things first, actually, just research the transport ship. We'll probably forget to do so otherwise. Nineteen thirty seven elections. Wait, huh? That was supposed to be December nineteen thirty seven, it's May. Oh, 
Okay, that's fantastic. 1937 elections. The time for elections in Ireland has come at last, and with that, the many people heading to head to the polls who elect Ireland's new government. Unlike every other election in recent memory, Collins is not the overwhelming favourite to win, as Fianna Fáil wages a brutal campaign against Collins, announcing him as a jaded old conflict hero, only kept in power by the weight of his name. Collins has shot back, with both refuting these claims and steadily working to prove to Ireland that he still has policies to bring to the table. Meanwhile, Sinn Féin continues positioning themselves as a non-violent and non-radical option compared to Fine Gael and public controllists, receiving a surge in power not seen since the fall of the now defunct Irish Labour Party. Another dark horse party that has been steadily gaining power is the National Centre Party, which has been steadily growing since the economic slump began. While most of the major parties in contention for the, seek, uh, for the election seek to preserve Ireland's democratic system, as is the public controllist Irish Worker League, has been steadily gaining power with funding and support from the Union of Britain. The IWL promises to tear down Ireland's current system and usher in a syndicalist revolution in the Emer Emerald Isle. And while their chances of winning the elections are very slim, if they manage to pull off a win, then it would surely shake the world of Irish politics at the core, possibly even leading to its end as a vote to win who has won. Okay. I, I much prefer it to be in May of 37 than December of 37, so this is fine by me. Now, on Charvis uh, Kovlig. Pop a quick save, just in case I mess this up. I believe that the public controllers have to win. Uh, public controllers win the elections. Collins doesn't accept them. Collins gets shot. O'Duffy takes over. Nat Pop, O'Quinnagon, coups later on. Okay. The public controller's broad coalition edges out a win. Actually, that was the correct option. The public controller's wins. Uh, the public controller's win. It seems that the black money crisis was too much of a storm for Collins to weather and the... Uh, wrong, wrong weather. And the syndicalists have managed to win despite the odds against them. Senior Fine Gael member Richard Mulcahy has advised Collins to maintain some dignity and step down, uh, though Prime Minister Duffy has told him to take extreme measures to save Ireland. And vanishes into obscurity. Not likely. I presume this is the correct option. Dissolve slash dissolve the Aractus. Okay, perfect. Collins dissolves the Aractus. Yes, this is way better. So it costs less crystal power. Crystal power minus 30. Michael Collins becomes leader for the Auth or for, for the Paternal Autocrats party. Add Ono Duffy, uh, Kevin O'Higgins, Ernest Blythe, and Conor McGuire. Change the popularity of Paternal Autocracy 20%. Politics will change. The ACA becomes the ruling party. Public elections will not be held. Okay. Authoritarian liberalism. Now oh, the failure of Irish democracy. Collins dissolves the Oireachtas. Unprecedented scenes have been reported from Ireland where incumbent President Michael Collins has overturned the results of the latest general election following a syndicalist victory. Seeing the possibility that Ireland could fall to the Reds, Collins has opted instead to disband the Oireachtas and rule by personal decree. This is officially described as a temporary as a temporary measure in the face of the unstable situation that is unfolding within Ireland. Whether or not this is the case, the international media is describing this outcome to be the final result of Ireland's vulnerable position. Um, next to the Union of Britain, the direction Collins's firm hand will lead the country to from now on remains to be seen. I thought he was supposed to be a Democrat. With Collins dissolving the Oireachtas in the immediate aftermath, there have been angry riots from the public controllers' opposition. In the chaos, a disgruntled uh, Fianna Fáil supporter has attempted to assassinate a president. Should he fall, the public controllers will no doubt attempt to overthrow the government. Collins is dead in the ICA Storms Leinster House. Collins is dead and will be assassinated. Skill. Yes, Collins is dead and O'Duffy takes command of Ireland. Political power, minus 20. Gain, base ability, minus 5%. Ono Duffy becomes the leader for the Paternal Autocrats Party. Uh, they'll be known as the Ar Army Comrades Association. Add Post Collins Chaos, which grants a daily political power cost at plus 0.1. Stability, minus 10%. Michael Collins stops being a field marshal. Sorry. So who's the pre now? Oh, look at that. He gets a bit taller. Duffy asks as a cure as well, that's right. Also, I believe it's in the mod, um... Oh, it's not Krasnacht. Also, apparently it's been over a year since Krasnacht had any teaser. It's, uh, Calter Creek. Calter Creek? Calter Creek? Yeah, I think it's Calter Creek. O'Quinnagon can also pop up in Ireland. Which is fantastic. I'm also going to play as him there, no doubt. Now, we will wait until the end of, uh, ten days. Just to see if... Uh, 
Which one? Nationalists take over the Netherlands. There we are. The fate of Ireland. The outcome of Conza's death has resulted in nothing short of disaster for the Irish nation. The wake of Conza's death, Ono Duffy uh, Collins Taoiseach and leader of the Army Comrades Association, better known as the Blue Shirts, has taken temporary control of Ireland. However, the situation is deteriorating further. O'Duffy has considered simply handing control of a state to the to a group eager to restore order to the Emerald Isle. Stepping up with an offer to lead is the Altiri Naheserga, or Architects of Resurrection, led by a curious man named Garoda Quinnagon. This movement promises O'Duffy a place in the cabinet if he authorises them to take charge. An ideal situation for O'Duffy, who desires not leadership but rather a place as a militia leader. Will O'Duffy take the ANH up on their offer? Takes charge, crushing all in his wake. No, 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 no. O'Duffy appoints O'Quinnagon and the ANH. Politics will change. NH becomes the ruling party. Public elections will not be held. Change the popularity of national populism. 15%. There he is. Garrod. Or if you ever want to insult anyone named Garrod, just call him Garchod, which is a funny name. Well, that was easy. Now, there is absolutely no point going uh, down the air on the world stage and asking the Americans for money because, you know, look at it. So instead, now we need to get rid of the uh, post columns chaos, no doubt. Oh, uh, Duffy gets bored of the field marshal. I didn't expect to get here so fast. The mod actually isn't running nearly as slow as I thought it would be. Uh, we're, we're an hour and six minutes in, or we're already in May 37. But alright, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We've already gotten Garrod O'Quinnagon in power. And in the next episode, we shall uh, go about setting up his government. And um, perhaps also dealing with the status of Ulster. Or um, maybe, hopefully. We'll get as much done as possible. I shall see you then. Very successful. Didn't expect to go this far at all.